everyone, Angela, the Sped Tech teacher here, and today I'm going to show you the special education caseload workbook and what each of the tabs do. So right now we're looking at the caseload tab, and this is just exactly what you would think it is. This is where you would enter your caseload information. Um, so this first column on the left is IEP order, which I will get to in a minute. Um, but what you want to do is just go through and enter your caseload information, um, whatever it is. When you figure out uh, when the re most recent IEP was held, um, that's when you would enter the date. So let's say I did this June 1st of 2019. If I click the cell over, um, it will automatically change to um, a year later minus one day. So this column is already um, set up to where it will tell you when um, the next due date is, and I don't know why it says six, hold on, 6-1 of 2019, put 2029 by accident, sorry. Anyways, this will auto automatically populate the next IEP due date. Same thing with the reeval. if this was done on um, June 1st of 2019 and I click outside of that box, this would automatically auto-populate to when their reevaluation is due, which is three years from that last evaluation. If you put in their birth date, um, what will happen with the next column is this will also change to their birth date. If they are 18 or older, this will turn green. If not, let's say if I put um, a different birth date, if it's below 18, then it'll stay white. Um, but this is just giving you their basic information. This is the column where you could put their disability, whatever it is. Um, I know it differs from uh, districts and states, but you could put you know, your specific learning disability, cognitive impairment, um, whatever your um, different disabilities are, you can put in this column. Um, this column is for related services which is like social work. So if your student sees social work or um, anything else, you could also put that in this column. Um, so that's what this column is for. If the student doesn't have anything, you can just leave it blank. And then any notes that you might want to add. Now, if you look at the top of this, you can see that there's a little minus button. If you, This is for grouping and ungrouping. So if you just want to look at your basic information, like your, your IEP information, your MET information, that's what, these, uh, that's what this is for, just, just to focus on that. However, if you want to see everything, you can ungroup it and it can show you much more. Um, also, back to this first column on the left, once you've filled out all your information, your whole caseload, you've listed grade, you know, everything, um, something I like to do, and it's totally optional, is you know, is you can order their IEP due dates. So if I have some in September that I need to get done, I might want to go through and just number it. Okay, this one, this student needs to be have theirs done first, second, third, and so forth. Um, so that's what this is for. Again, that's I like to do it just because I like to know which order I need to do it in. And once that student is done, then it's done. If you don't want to do this, it's optional. And then I can just click this little minus button and it just goes away. So this is your caseload tab. Clicking over to the compliancy tracker, what this does is this helps you track dates that you uh, gave out information, dates that you received paperwork back um, so that you can also um, upload it into your um, IEP database, but also just as a reminder to you of, oh, I still need to get this done. So again, if I go back to um, putting in my student name, this, as you can see, the IEP due date um, is automatically uploaded from this first page. Um, if I entered it in there, then it will automatically transfer over to the next page. And then contact parent on. This is just letting me know, okay, the week of, um, you know, 4.30 of 2020, I need to contact the parent to set up the meeting for at least this date. Um, so this just is, again, a kind of a heads up as, hey, you know, you need to start um, contacting teachers, contacting parents, 
the week of April 30th so that we can have enough time to plan for our May 30th meeting or sooner if you choose. Transition questionnaire, this is for students who are of transition age. So um, I know some schools start at eighth grade and higher. And whatever survey or questionnaire or um, whatever it is you give your students, um, this is the date that you would enter that you completed that questionnaire or survey. Um, all you have to do for these is if you double click on the cell, a little calendar will pop up. And this is just to make it easier to use. Uh, same thing for the IEP meeting. This is the date that you talked about with the parent, with your teachers. Everybody comes to an agreeable date. Um, so all you have to do once you've figured out what that day is, is double click and then you can enter your date in the box. Parent input form. Um, I know a lot of times it could be either electronic or it could be a paper survey or questionnaire that you give them. Uh, I put, when did you get that date? back from the parent. You just enter the date in here. Teacher input form because we know we have to get information and data from their gen ed teachers. Um, what day did you send that out? Um, and again that's for your IEP purposes. Not so much when you got it back but when it was sent. Um, sometimes if we don't get that back um, you know we can note that in the IEP but at least we have proof that we sent it out. Um, once you have a name of who is going to be attending the IEP, you can put the teacher's name in here, and this is just something you type in. Um, and then when everything is said and done, when was the IEP finalized? Again, double click. And then finally, when did you send the IEP home to the parents? So um, if you notice at the top, you can see that I have another group and ungrouping page. If you click the plus button, uh, another section comes up and this is for those teachers who are also responsible for the three-year reevaluation process. I know some schools, the school psych will take care of all this, but there are some other schools where the case manager has to initiate um, the paperwork and, and um, get that started. So depending on what your school calls it, and you know, I know for my district we call it a read, but basically um, a meeting that says, okay, this is what we want to do. We have a three-year reevaluation coming up, and this is these are the assessments we are going to perform. You know, you get consent from the parent. Um, when did we send that out to the parent? The date we actually got it back. Um, when the the that paperwork is due. Usually it's uh, 30 school days, depending on what state you're in. And then uh, the dates that you received reports from your school psych, social worker, you know, any other related service person, just so you can keep track of it. Again, if you have a student that doesn't need a three-year real evaluation, you don't need to fill this out. I have a couple that are due this year, so um, I will be using this. Again, if you don't need it, just hit the minus button at the top and it kind of makes it disappear. So that is your compliancy tracker. Uh, next tab over is your accommodations, and this is for your caseload and um, just to keep track of what accommodations they have. And then also to um, remind you to send them out to the gen ed teachers. So again, um, student here is John Doe. And let's make this in a color we can see. Okay, so John Doe. And I could put his accommodations in here. So small group maybe, um, tests read aloud, depending on what the IEP says, right? So I would just fill this in for all of my students. <coughs> and then if you look on the left, this is the column that says, if you click on it, that you sent out the log. So once I am finished, um, you know, putting in his accommodations and setting up the paperwork, I will give this to his gen ed teachers or any other uh, staff who will be interacting with the student so they are aware. I just check the box so that I know, okay, sent that out. So this is just for you to track. Um, this next section is just their grade that you can enter. So this is uh, one way you can do it. I did enter, I did give you the option of having this other format, um, which is listing the accommodations on the left and then putting student names up on top. So John Doe, I would enter up top and then um, put his grade here. 
And then again, I would just put the accommodation, small group, uh, tests read aloud, whatever his accommodations are. Um, and then I can just put like an X in this column because these are the accommodations he gets. Obviously, I would um, have more accommodations here for the rest of the students, but I wouldn't check them off for him because he would only get the ones that are assigned to him. And again, the checkbox is for when I sent it out to teachers. So just two different formats for you, whatever is a little bit more uh, convenient, easier for you to read. If we look at the next tab over, we're looking at student schedules. And this is more so for um, middle schoolers, high schoolers, where they change classes. So again, on the left, you have the grade, you have the student name. Advisory is what we call it at our school. It could also be a homeroom. Um, if you don't have this, then you don't need to, you don't need to worry about this. But um, then you would just enter the class, the teacher name for um, each hour that the student has. Um, and this is just for quick reference. If you don't want to, you know, individually pull up every student in your school system, you just have a sheet that has this here. Um, and, and there's a spot for notes as well. If you have first hour, second hour, you can definitely change these headers right here um, to reflect that. The next one over is a progress report tracker. So as you know, if we're doing IEPs, um, you know, you could do them quarterly. You do progress reports that we have to send out to the parents. So this tab is um, just to kind of track which students you've completed progress reports for and which students you have sent out progress reports for. So um, this is just something I like to do for me. Uh, so again, you have grade, student name. Check the box when you completed the pro progress report in your IEP database. Uh, check the box when you've printed them off um, and then mailed them. If you have notes in here, you can put some notes. Um, right here, I put double households. Um, sometimes students have two different households. Maybe they live with their mom and then they go visit their dad. Um, if I check this box, this just lets me know that I need to print off duplicates. So this is pretty cut and dry. It's just a, a tracking system to help you remember which progress reports you've completed and printed out. Uh, the next tab over is your progress monitoring tracker. Um, and this is just a way to enter your data and just to get a general idea of how your student is doing. So if we go back to this and say, okay, this is John Doe. Um, the way this works is, okay, we're, we're assuming we're starting in September and you can change these headers, or these titles if you want. Um, but the way it works is the gray areas where you would put the date and description. So let's say June 1st of 2019 is when I did the progress monitoring. Description would go next to the date. So maybe we worked on main idea. So I have the date and I have what we did. Um, and maybe he got a 65% on that data piece. Your average would, will automatically populate on the left. And the way it's set up is 80% or above is going to be in green. Um, typically, that's proficient. Um, anything between 70 and 79 is going to be yellow, just to kind of show, hey, they're, you know, maybe, you know, they're improving, they're almost there. And anything below 70% is going to be red. Um, so this is just a way to track that. Um, and if you expand each month, they give you, you know, four more sections to complete it. This is assuming you, you know, maybe t do progress monitoring once a week. I know not everybody does that. Maybe you do it biweekly or monthly, but you have the option of entering more uh, data points into this. So as long as you remember that the gray is for the date and the description of the progress monitoring that you did, and then the, the colored piece underneath is the percentage, um, that is how this average is calculated. Um, so again, just kind of uh, ungroup and group as needed. You have it for every month up until June. And then if you scroll over towards the bottom, here's a suspension tracker. Um, again, for 
students who maybe, you know, I know some schools after X amount of days um, of being outside of school or being suspended out of school, um, you still have to provide services, you know, FAPE, free and appropriate public education to these students. Um, so this is just a way of tracking those students who might um, be out and then marking the number of days that they're out so that you know, oh, okay, um, maybe they've been suspended for 10 days. I know at our school, after 10 days, we have to provide FAPE for them. Um, so this is just kind of to track how long they've been out. If you keep scrolling, you'll notice two locked tabs. This is a master caseload tab. So let's say you accidentally um, messed something up with the original one. Maybe you accidentally deleted something or something got messed up. You can always go back to the master caseload one and copy it and duplicate it and redo it. Um, same thing with the master progress monitoring. Those are there. They're protected. Um, if you make a copy of it, you can edit it. But it's just there as in, in case something goes wrong and you don't want to, uh, you know, start from scratch. You've got a template there for you. So hopefully this helps um, helps you track your caseload a little bit more. Um, maybe serves as a reminder to perform some tasks that need to be done. Just something to help you stay compliant throughout the school year. Everybody likes compliant. Our bosses like compliant. Everybody wins. So hopefully this helps. Um, and I hope you have a great school year. Hope your IEPs are on time and awesome. Um, so this is Angela saying good luck. Have a great year.